Assalamualaikum. Uh, today we have uh, Senator Musha Mushahid Hussain. Uh, he's the chairman of uh, CPAC, closely associated with the media. And uh, with him we have uh, Ms. Shazre. Welcome to Washington, D.C. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, Assalamu Alaikum to all the viewers of Next TV on my behalf and on behalf of Dr. Shazra Mansab Ali, member of the National Assembly of Pakistan from the Nankana district. And she is a directly elected member of parliament and a rising star of the ruling party. Fantastic. What brings you to DC? Uh, Dr. Shazra Mansab Ali and myself have been nominated as special envoy on the Kashmir issue by the Prime Minister of Pakistan as part of a new global diplomatic offensive launched by the government of Pakistan to promote the and project the Kashmir cause effectively. And this uh, diplomatic offensive uh, extends to Asia, extends to Europe, Africa, and of course, North America. And this offensive uh, includes uh, creating knowledge, awareness? Basically, two things. Number one, to promote and project the Kashmir cause effectively, given in light of the recent popular, spontaneous, indigenous and widespread uprising in the wake of the extrajudicial assassination of Burhan Muzaffar Wani, the Kashmiri freedom fighter. And to ensure that the international community not only takes notice of these horrendous crimes against humanity committed by the Indian occupation forces, but also to alleviate the sufferings at the hands of the occupation army. And secondly, to convey the message that Pakistan wants a peaceful and swift solution of the Kashmir issue, and Pakistan is ready for talks, and the Indian pressure, to, uh, which is to deflect uh, from the Kashmir issue, is uh, undermining peace, security, and stability in South Asia. Ms. Shazri, uh, can you tell me, um, does this uh, present crisis uh, affect the CPAC in any way? Uh, the present crisis is not going to affect the CPEC in any way. Uh, uh, the Pakistani government have ensured that the CPEC project uh, will go on. It's a very important project for Pakistan uh, and Pakistan's future. It's a game changer, not only for Pakistan, but for the whole region of South Asia. And uh, the government has raised uh, 10 uh, 10, 100, uh, 100,000 strong troops to, uh, for the safety of uh, the Chinese people who are going to come and work on the CPEC project. And it's a huge initiative by the Chinese government, the part of the One Road, One Belt project by the Chinese government, which is going to have an impact on uh, the uh, whole region, the economics and uh, the uh, energy uh, uh, levels of the whole region. Does the CPAC route go through Kashmir? It goes through Gilgit, Baltistan, it, and uh, of course there are projects in Azad Kashmir also, because uh, Gilgit, Baltistan and Azad Kashmir are currently in, uh, under Pakistan administration. And this is nothing new because the China-Pakistan Friendship Highway, the Karakrum Highway was built way back in the 60s, 50 years ago, and that also passes through the Gilgit Baltistan area and winds its way to the Chinese province of Xinjiang. Uh, you know, you must have a lot of opposition to the propaganda that's happening about Kashmir right now, the crisis. Uh, do you find a, a, a support on that here locally? The people that we have met till now there uh, is a feeling uh, that there is not uh, 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 there's not so much sub spontaneous support there is uh, conditional support we've been uh, uh, given conditions and those conditions entail the elimination of terrorism uh, from pakistan and that uh, we think and we have this feeling and not only us but even this feeling is rife in the public of Pakistan that the U.S. is being controlled by the Indian lobbyists and, uh, and it's speaking the Indian uh, uh, language. And this is something that we are here to counter. This is something that we are here to explain 
to the U.S. something that it should already know that Pakistan is fighting one of the most successful, the largest fight against terrorism uh, right now. It's the fight, the Zarbeyas, is still going on. Uh, and we are continuing to do that. However, the Kashmir issue is a completely separate humanitarian issue, uh, and that uh, is enshrined within the um, United Nations uh, Charter, and that is not something that should be, uh, for which support should be conditional. Um, you have been a Minister of Information and Communications also. Uh, so, as Shaza said, that there's a problem that uh, the Americans are uh, speaking the Indian narrative. Um, obviously, the, India has a stronger media hold and they, their propaganda machine is more ingrained here. How do we counter that? I would say it's less to do with the media machine and more to do with the US-India growing strategic and political interests centered on the purchase by India of uh, military equipment and other uh, kinds of economic interests. So those are the key issues. The media follows la uh, later. So I would say that the main issue is that uh, close camaraderie and rapport between the US and India. And uh, we do not grudge that, but we do feel that India should not have veto on United States actions or policies towards Pakistan, because that stands on its own independently because we are a pivotal player in the most strategic part of the world. And so that is the main thing. And otherwise, when the Americans follow the Indian line in uh, scuttling the deal on F-16s or following the Indian narrative, as she rightly said, on Kashmir, then that is something which is detrimental to our interests. And also, we feel, it's contrary to facts as they are on the ground. What can we as expats living in Washington, D.C., do to help? That is a very important thing. You are the unofficial ambassadors of Pakistan. You have an ingress into American society. And you have more freedom to speak on issues about Pakistan's interests than the diplomats who are circumscribed by their own official positions. So I feel the sky is the limit. They can be lobbying, you can write to your congressman, to your senator, you can speak up, you can write a letter to the editor, you can speak up in think tanks, you can organize uh, groups that send petitions, uh, you ha can have online activism uh, through the in internet on various issues, and I think that can be very effective because these voices would be multiplied. You can have a larger coalition with other people who feel similarly on these issues.